Well, Marin County, California is one of the richest places in the United States, maybe the world. It's pretty nice if you haven't been there. Sean Penn lives there. It's got a per capita income of more than $90,000. It's also one of the most liberal enclaves you'll ever find. 77% of its residents voted for Hillary last fall. With all that money and all those progressive values, you'd think that people in Marin would be willing to implement liberal policies. And most of the time they are, as long as those policies don't inconvenience them personally. Consider affordable housing and residential diversity. Those are two cornerstones of progressive dogma, as you know. In California, subsidized housing is required everywhere, but Marin doesn't want it. Mark Levine is a liberal Democrat who represents the county in the California State Assembly. He's pushing a proposal that would give Marin County a special exemption from statewide affordable housing requirements, despite the fact that if there's any place on the planet that could use more affordable housing, it's suburban San Francisco. Marin could probably also use a little of that diversity thing they're always talking about. As of the last census, the county was less than 3% black, which is what liberals call segregated. There's no doubt that if you ask local residents, they'd have excellent reasons for why Marin County shouldn't have to follow the same rules as everybody else in the state of California. They'll say they need to preserve the county's charm or its historic character, or they'll vaguely note that housing projects bring crime problems and may hurt the schools. Keep in mind, they're definitely not racist or anything. They're not afraid of diversity. It's not like they voted for Donald Trump or something. And actually, to be completely honest, we believe them. They probably aren't racist. Most Americans aren't. But when you vote for the policies of enforced diversity for everyone else, when you tell the rest of America they're bigots for not wanting a housing project next door or Somali refugees flooding into their kids' schools, you probably ought to follow the same rules yourself. But of course they don't because they never do. Well, the second day of the G20 summit in Hamburg, Germany, saw even more violent protests, which injured almost 200 police officers. Well, that was Germany, as we said, but it could have been right here in America. It could have been Berkeley or Baltimore or Ferguson. It could have been a lot of different places. It's all the same, this kind of protesting slash rioting. Bob Woodson has been around a long time and seen protests for 50 years. He's president and founder of the Woodson Center. He's the author of The Triumphs of Joseph. He says today's violent rioters are distorting earlier protest movements. Mr. Woodson, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. Good so, glad to be here, Sean. What, what Thank you. You, you. You. I'm no, sorry. No, go ahead. Well, you were in. You were involved in the civil rights movement, which is, of course, the stated model for a lot of the protests we're watching. How do they compare? Well, first of all, let me just say I was involved in the civil rights movement even in the mid 50s when I was stationed in the military in the South, and I was the subject to police uh, intimidation. And for three years after I was discharged. I would, my heart would race when the police officer was behind me. But I also was a veteran of the civil rights movement, led demonstrations in uh, Baird Rustin's hometown of Westchester, Pennsylvania. But I realized that what has happened over the past few years is that the civil rights movement has morphed into a race grievance industry. And it's also uh, 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 it is hypocritical in that they are using race to justify the, the generation of inequity. When we demonstrated in, uh, in the 60s, we did so for the purposes of pursuing inclusion. We didn't, we didn't right. uh, demonstrate so we could have separate graduation ceremonies. We also demonstrated um, to, to, to change the, the climate. We were peaceful. We sought uh, the support of the police. We also were disciplined. We made certain that we had the proper role models, uh, such as Rosa Parks, uh, someone of good character. So, but, but the civil rights movement of the 60s has now been hijacked by the left and has become a race grievance industry, and they are just distorting it and really destroying what we have created. So, Mr. Woodson, when you, having 
personally fought against segregation, look around and see the left pushing to reinstate segregation, as you just said, with separate graduation ceremonies, separate dorms, separate parts of the cafeteria at, in, uh, in colleges. What do you make of that? Is that bewildering to you? Well, first, first of all, it's, it's even worse than, than you're portraying it. When people have deeply held beliefs, and these beliefs are challenged with facts and truth, what they have to do is create destructive myths. The myth is that the conditions that you see low-income blacks are in today is somehow a legacy of, of slavery and Jim Crow, and therefore what you're witnessing now is a legacy. That is just not true. In the past, blacks were in slavery, but not of slavery. Blacks were in uh, uh, segregated, but they were not of it. Blacks were in poverty, but not of poverty. In other words, from the time of slavery up into the 60s, even though we were facing these odds, um, we, we, we have old people could walk in their communities without fearing their grandchildren. We didn't have outer wedlock births. Our marriage rates in the 1930s to 1940s was higher than the white marriage rate. But all of that changed in 1960 when we met this tsunami of liberal uh, academics who said w one of the things we have to do is to, is we made welfare a, a right and then reparations. We also uh, disconnected work from income and this was purposely done by Cloward and Piven and the liberal academics at Columbia yeah. University and they said if we do this it means that fathers will be irrelevant Drug addiction will go up, school dropouts will increase, and so what we are witness, what, what segregation and racism could not accomplish, liberal policies of the 60s did. And as a consequence, we now have 70 percent of children in, are being born in single-parent households. But this did not happen doing segregation. So yep. uh, it, uh, urban renewal destroyed all of the commercial centers around the country. Uh, and so it, it, it's just a myth, it's, it, and, it's, and it's a real crisis. It must, be, it must be so bitter for you to watch it. Robert Woodson, thank you for that perspective. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sad story.